Hey my friends, so I wanted to come to you today and show you a recent watercolor mixed media piece that I did. So let's get started. Okay guys, so here you see me working in a watercolor journal. I will give you information on all the materials I use um, in this video, so don't worry and you don't have to be writing things down. Um, so right now I've got my, my sketch kind of on there and I am just coating the entire page with just a thin layer of water. Um, I really like doing that so that the page is nicely saturated, not too wet. Um, then I'm going in here with kind of a neutral gray blue color and I'm just adding some tone. I like to really start with some value. This just helps me sort of see where I'm going to take the piece. I really didn't have, um, you know, much in mind. I knew that I wanted her kind of backlit against the moon and I wanted to keep things really gentle and soft. Um, so I am using this vintage uh, color palette that I will give you info on and I am just kind of going in here and adding in some tone. Now the thing that I am learning and reminding myself when I'm using watercolors is that they dry a lot lighter. Um, so a lot of times I'll go in and I'll do this and I'm like, oh my gosh, that is so dark. Um, but it ends up drying a lot lighter and if you're a watercolor artist, you, you know this already. Um, so I have to really take some deep breaths with watercolor work uh, because I'm new at it and I'm, I'm, you know, as I mentioned, I'm learning, I'm exploring it. Um, I don't always know what it's going to do. I'm still learning about uh, control and not overworking it. Um, so you might notice that I'm just kind of moving a little bit slowly with it. Now the video is slightly uh, sped up, so um, you know, just for you guys, you're not watching me for hours. Um, but I do tend to start out a little bit gingerly with the watercolor as compared to acrylics or oils, which I'm much more familiar with. Um, so you can see me just building up the value and I will continue to do this with this neutral kind of, um, it's almost like a Payne's gray color. Uh, and then I'll move into other colors. One thing that I really believe that watercolor is teaching me is that it's teaching me to um, just to work a little bit lighter. Uh, coming from charcoal and acrylics and oils, I don't always stay super light in my colors um, or the way that I use the paint. And so watercolor feels very delicate. I know it can be very bold as well, but the way that I'm really enjoying it is to create really kind of um, soft, uh, kind of ethereal feeling, um, very light filled pieces and I really find it very soothing uh, to work in this way. And I love that different mediums give you different uh, feelings. They kind of have a different emotion, they, they kind of encourage you to express yourself in a different way. Um, and that's why I love experimenting with different mediums. So at this point, I know that I do want to bring in some pink. So I go ahead and use that lovely, uh, I think it's apple blossom. And I put that and start to kind of dab that onto the dress. I know I want it to have a kind of a floral feel, but it's going to be very sort of ambiguous and kind of gestural. So I'm not worried about actually, you know, painting on actual flowers, just more about getting the, some tones on there just, just to start out. I'm using a Neptune, a Princeton Neptune brush. I believe that's a size 12. Uh, again, I'll leave all the information for you in the video um, or in the show notes, but I really love these brushes. They're, they hold a lot of water um, and they're just beautiful. They, have a, they come to a really nice point, so you can do really fine work even with a big brush, uh, which I really find handy. So there I also used a little bit of the, uh, the terracotta with the apple blossom just to drop in a little bit of uh, skin tone color. Um, I'm darkening up the buildings here in the background. And those are going to stay pretty uh, 
you know, just an impression of buildings. I don't go into uh, extreme detail. And I know I need to push the value here of the backlit Eiffel Tower, um, since it's kind of up against that bright moon. So I'm still kind of working out value here. I know that I want her hair to be dark. And as I mentioned, she's backlit, so I need to keep building that value a little bit. Now I'm going in with a really pale green. I believe this one's called Sage. Um, and some of these colors, you know, after they dry, they're barely noticeable, especially on camera. Um, in person, they seemed a little brighter to me. Um, but now looking at them on camera, they're very, very pale. But again, I'm going for a really pale look, so that's okay, and I can always build them up a little bit more later on. I'm kind of giving a little bit of a floral, like leaf foliage effect kind of around her. And again, I'm allowing things to not be super defined, especially as we near the edges of the piece. I kind of want it all to kind of fade away into amb ambigu ambiguity. Adding a little bit of the golden glow to the moon and just getting in that yellow color. Now typically I probably would have gone and used gold watercolor or an iridescent, um, but for this vintage look I think I just wanted to stay with these vintage colors instead of using you know a bright gold which may have been a little bit too strong for this piece. So I'm just building up this, uh, this soft golden color. can see how light everything dries. Again, I think that just really surprises me. Um, you know, acrylics tend to dry darker, but watercolors um, obviously dry quite a bit lighter. So here, just going in with a little bit of pink, starting to bring in some more flesh tone uh, to her face. That's a little bit of alizarin crimson that's on my palette there, and that's what I'm adding into that uh, apple blossom pink. to jump around a lot um, in my work so I never work on just one area for very long I kind of evolve the painting uh, kind of holistically and then off camera I grabbed a little bit of um, some burnt sienna watercolor and and started to mix that in a little bit with my pinks and that's giving me a little bit more of a flesh tone Going in with some charcoal here, some charcoal black from this palette, and it's slightly tinted with the raw sienna that's on my brush, so it comes out quite warm, um, and just building that value in the hair. I really love with watercolor how if you're really gestural with your brush marks, or your brush strokes, that it leaves sort of this lovely freshness. So. I do attempt that in certain areas in this piece, like in the hair, just kind of a sketchy uh, brush stroke. Quite like that effect. You'll see me do it in the fan as well. This fan is serving as sort of a dark element in the composition, um, and it balances the hair, uh, and it keeps the eye sort of in the composition instead of going off the page. So you'll see me develop that a little, little more as we go. Here I'm just enhancing those shadows again. She's backlit, so I need to push that value a little bit so we get that glow of the moon feeling. I'm very delicately trying to build some, some shadow and value in her face as well. And that's where I definitely felt the hesitation. That's where I felt that new uh, student feeling where I was like, I don't want to mess up the face. <laughs> so. Um, you know, you'll see me develop it, but I definitely had my, my hang-ups about it. Now I'm using my smaller brush now to uh, go in and make some uh, more pink marks, you know, kind of alluding to that floral look. Just very delicate little strokes.
Still trying to get that skin color to work and not mess up the face at the same time. So definitely was a little bit of a challenge for me. So I'm going in now with the uh, soft lilac and starting to uh, kind of build that into the shadows. I definitely don't want the shadows to just be um, one color. I want there to be sort of a myriad of colors. So I'm adding that in as a cool, um, just to add a little more depth to the piece. I'm definitely a little bit looser now. I'm feeling a little bit more comfortable. Um, but of course, as someone who's you know, relatively new to using watercolor in this way. Um, I definitely had my moments of, of hesitation as well. So using that lilac in the hair, I always like to use um, colors in multiple places. I don't want to just have one blotch of purple or lilac in one area. I'll build it into all of my shadows and that way there's a little bit more color harmony. Uh, when you are finished with the piece, you can kind of read that color throughout. Same here, I'm going into the buildings and adding a little bit of the, the lilac. And uh, just building up that golden color in the moon because of course it dried very, very light. And these are not super high-end watercolors too. I must um, mention that. I really like them, I enjoy them. I think they're great for someone who's learning. Um, but I wouldn't necessarily say they're you know, super professional uh, grade compared to something like a, a Danielle Smith watercolor. Um, but I really like these little kits. I think they're, they're fun, they're pretty. Uh, they're grouped in nice little collections like this. So uh, I thought it was, it was perfect for this little piece in my sketchbook. As you can see here, I'm using that yellow, like I mentioned with the purple or the lilac. I do want to use it in multiple areas. I don't just want the moon to be yellow. Um, and here I'm also doing some drips and splashes, and uh, I think that's really fun and can help you loosen up. Uh, I tend to do that when I'm feeling like I'm getting too tight. Um, I love the effect of those little watery splashes once they dry. And if you use a bigger brush, you're going to get bigger splotches and obviously a smaller brush. You'll get um, little tiny ones. And they're really easy to edit too. I'll, you'll see me go in here and uh, take a few out. So uh, while it's still wet, you can just go ahead and touch it with your brush and they go, they go away. This is cold pressed paper. I don't think I mentioned that. So um, it has a little bit of a tooth to it. It's not uh, a very pronounced tooth as it get compared to um, other watercolor papers that I use, but um, I just love this watercolor journal. And then I love, love, love drips. So you guys probably know if you've seen my work, I do drips in a lot of my work, whether I'm working in watercolor or charcoal or, you know, uh, acrylics. I love to have some drips. I just think it's kind of a I don't know, it just kind of breaks up the piece and it gives this sort of uh, beautiful effect that I enjoy. So here I am grabbing my Titan Buff Golden Acrylic Paint and I have kind of had it up to here with the skin tone and I'm being a little bit of a baby, <laughs> to be honest. But I decided I would mix some of the watercolors with the Titan Buff so I got a little bit more of an opaque paint. Um, and this is where, you know, being a mixed media artist, I kind of reached for the things that I am familiar with and maybe on another piece I'll push the skin tones more with just pure watercolor but it's a mixed media piece so I decided why not um, I think that's one of the things I have to remind myself of is I don't need to follow any rules I can do what I want um, so I went ahead and just mixed up some of the Titan buff with a little of the pink a little bit of the alizarin crimson and a touch of the burnt sienna and ended up getting a little bit more of a an opaque skin tone that I was pleased with that I could work with. And I think that's kind of my fallback like when I'm working with watercolor like this because you know it's newer to me um, 
I kind of in the back of my mind always have this thought like if it doesn't work I'll just pull out my other paints um, here I'm using some uh, gouache and this is by Arteza I love using gouache um, with watercolor because it's water soluble so if I put it on too strongly um, I can soften it but you can also build it to be like a titanium white acrylic um, and I really like that versatility in it. I love adding light in with really bold, or not bold, but strong, I guess, um, opaque lights. Um, so I definitely love using gouache with the watercolor. You could definitely use, um, you know, acrylic paint as well if you wanted to grab your titanium white and do this. Uh, but the gouache, I just like the versatility of it, as I mentioned, that I can soften it because it reactivates with water um, and that's kind of why it works so well with with watercolor so you can see right away now that I have the values down even though they're subtle um, as I add in that opaque white you can you can recognize that as lights as the light hitting this very uh, gauzy you know fancy fabric in her dress and to me that just makes me really really happy so I've zoomed in here a little bit so you can see a little closer um, those lights going in um, I also really love playing with um, mark making with with pure white and adding in those little delicate uh, moments I'm definitely starting to have more fun with the painting at this point. <laughs> I'm a little less scared um, than I was before, uh, which always feels good. And I'm using my smallest brush from the Princeton Neptune uh, brushes that I have. I have three of them, and I believe they're a size 2, a size 6, and a size 12, or might be an 8, but I will, I will confirm that for you guys in the supply list. But you know, these watercolor brushes can be really expensive. Um, I found these to be quite affordable and they've held up really well as long as you take good care of them. Um, they, do, they do a great job, especially for someone who's learning. You know, you don't necessarily wanna go out and buy the most expensive brushes when you're new to, new to something. So I'm just building up those lights and very much enjoying it. And now I'm doing a few white splotches or dots um, with that splashing technique. So you just get your brush really wet um, and kind of roll it in the paint and then go ahead and tap your finger on it and you'll get those, those little dots. So I know that I now, now that I have some of these lights in, I know that I want to push this, you know, make it darker in the background just to emphasize the light. Um, and that's what's so cool about when you kind of develop the piece um, as a whole is that as you add light as you add dark it gives you more information about where you want to take the piece um, so yeah that's that's what I'm doing now I'm just kind of creating some more darks against those bright lights and that's what can create a little bit more of a sense of depth and obviously some more form You'll also notice that I do take moments, and even though this is sped up, I definitely take moments to pause and look at what I'm doing and see where I'm taking it and is, you know, is it reading, are the values right? Um, so definitely take moments to pause and really observe your work and see where, you know, what's happening in front of you. Um, so I just added in a little bit more pink to those cheeks. I want her to look a little flushed. And 
and I'm back doing the gouache again and I'm adding in some of those lights in the windows to give that impression of uh, you know a skyline or buildings in the background So now I'm going in with my Posca paint pen and I absolutely love this thing. I use it all the time and for me it's like magic. It's like a magic wand. <laughs> so I'm adding in those pearls in pure white. Um, it has a nice fine tip on it and so I'm able to get these really tiny dots and that just made me so happy to add those pearls in. Um, and I'm really glad that I had that kind of um, muted value you know of the dress of the of her neck in shadow already so that the the light of the pearls really kind of sparkles and then you know thinking of the pearls as really marks which is what they're really that's what they are um, you know I wanted to repeat it so I, I'm doing it up in the hair as well so if you choose to do you know a few delicate marks you know see where else in the piece you can um, kind of uh, repeat it. So just giving her a little bit more of a defined profile in light. Um, again, she's backlit, so you kind of get that halo effect. Um, and I'm kind of exaggerating it here, but you know, I can do that because I'm the artist, right? I just love the, the beautiful white that you can get from this pen. You definitely have to take care of them. You definitely need to make sure your paper is completely dry before you uh, use them, otherwise they get ruined, um, but they're great. And now I'm just adding in some more of those little dots as if maybe she's got sequins on her dress and it's catching the light. I think that's what's fun about working in this way like you don't you realize you don't have to tell the whole story you can just um, allude to details that aren't actually there the eye kind of fills in the rest and that's what's really fun about about working this way if I made that dress really really busy it would probably take away from her face and the whole scene so it's important to pay attention to where you want to draw the eye and where you want to add detail so I'm just uh, adding in a little bit of light into those windows. And now you see here I've grabbed my really fine, I think it's a 0 0.5, maybe less. Um, this is just a graphite pencil and it has a super, super fine tip. It might be a 0 02 actually. Um, and it's great for adding in really, really fine, fine lines and kind of just going in and defining a few things. You have to be really gentle with this pencil though because the tip is so fine that it will break um, quite often. Using graphite in this way with watercolor is really quite handy because you can go in and add, as I mentioned, line work, but you can also add in shading or you know other details as well. And you can see here I keep breaking the tip. And I know it's subtle, but those little areas of dark, those little subtle um, marks can can add definition where I need it and um, a little bit more form so I'm trying not to do it everywhere because I don't want to like outline her um, but I just want to add that sharp contrast in there a little bit and then here you know just adding in a little bit more line weight a little more uh, of a line element into the Eiffel Tower just to define it a little bit 
So now I've brought out my watercolor pencils. These are the Karen Ash Super Colors. And I love using these. Um, again, they're, they're watercolor pencils, so they blend really well. I can wet them, and I'm going in and furthering uh, the work I've done with the watercolor paints. Still in, you know, embellishing the fabric, um, adding in some tone. Okay, so this is now a Stabilo Marksol pencil, and this is in the brown, and it's a great pencil. Again, it's water soluble, but it's a great pencil for going in and adding a little bit more shading, but it's not quite as harsh or as strong as the black Stabilo pencil. So if you don't have a brown Stabilo Marksol pencil, highly recommend them if you like working this way. Um, yeah, they're great, and you'll see me use it um, quite a few times during this process. So I did go too strong underneath her bottom lip. I made a line there that's too strong. It's totally driving me crazy. So I go in with a little bit of white gouache and kind of smudge it over. Um, and it softens it right up. So that was a quick little fix there. Um, so here I'm doing a little bit of the watered down white gouache to add some, uh, some, some light into her cheeks where, you know, some of that light would be reflecting. I'm working from a very old vintage black and white photo, so I don't have a lot to go on. Um, the values are really strong. Um, but I'm doing my best. I can see that there's definitely light that bounces onto her cheeks. still just working on those highlights on the face. Just putting them in very delicately. I don't want to overdo it. I want it to be subtle. This is where I really love the gouache because again you can water it down and you can kind of blend it on there and soften it really, really easily. And one thing about working on the watercolor paper, guys, is that you really want to be delicate in your sketching. Um, definitely don't use a heavy hand because you don't want to be erasing or having really harsh lines to deal with. Um, or you could even transfer your sketch onto the paper. That's sometimes the best way to go and use uh, wax-free um, graphite transfer paper to get it onto your watercolor paper. And you watercolor artists know this already, but I definitely learned that the hard way when I did a sketch and had erased a bunch and realized that all the erasing and dark lines had kind of uh, created abrasions on my paper, which affected the overall effect of how the paint absorbed. There's that Marksol uh, Stabilo pencil again in the brown. Definitely a good one to have in your kit. And here I'm using a little bit of a, I think it's indigo watercolor pencil just to build the, um, the shadows a little bit. And you can tell guys that I'm using a really, really soft touch with all of these things. Um, it's kind of a delicate painting, so I felt a delicate touch made sense. So like I did with the lead pencil, the graphite pencil, I'm kind of doing a little bit of a similar touch there with the indigo, and just adding in some darker line work um, and shadows just to create a little more definition. And then I'm going back into the hair here with the, the charcoal um, black paint from that kit and adding in a little bit more value. Um, just felt like I needed to darken the hair, add a little more uh, sense of form there.
Now here, uh, the painting's completely dry and I've grabbed my white charcoal pencil and I've wanted to just add a little bit more light onto her face. Um, so again, very gently, I'm adding just a little bit more of a highlight with the white charcoal pencil. Definitely need your uh, piece to be totally dry for this to work. What I love about being a mixed media artist is that when I'm not getting the effect I want from one medium, I reach for something else. Going back in with the sage and just adding a few more touches, little leaf touches, putting a few in her hair. trying to do the same thing with the pink but I have way too much water on my brush um, so again learning So going back in with the pink here and just adding a little bit more uh, tone and some more marks. It's kind of got layers of marks in it, this dress. And then I've got uh, a golden pencil here, a golden watercolor pencil that I just wanted to push the yellow a little bit um, and some of the, the edges and just kind of define them a little bit more. And then I go ahead and soften that pencil work with a little bit of water. And I mentioned that the fan is kind of important in the composition, so I'm strengthening the lines in it and some of the darkness of it, um, so that again, it kind of points up to the face um, and works as like a darker element. And in this piece, I chose to kind of let the hands not be that defined. I wanted the detail to really be in her face, um, in her dress and in her hair, and of course, with that backdrop of beautiful Paris. So I think that's another thing that's really fun to do is really decide you know, where you want the focus and where you want to let things fade away. I think it gives the piece a lot more atmosphere when, when perhaps not everything is um, given the same treatment. And then I couldn't resist going back in and adding some of my white dots that I love to do. Um, you see this a lot in my work. kind of going in and checking my edges. And I decided to go ahead and um, give the moon a little bit more definition here by going in with the white gel pen or the, the Posca pen and just going around that, that lovely Parisian moon.
and just carrying on with the, the dots as a little magic, little, little motes of light. And I remember on my first trip to Paris, I was very jet lagged, obviously, when I arrived. And I went to sleep kind of early and I woke up with a view of the Eiffel Tower sparkling in lights. And it was one of the most gorgeous things I've ever seen. So I couldn't resist adding in uh, those lights onto my little Eiffel Tower here as if it was all lit up. And I learned that uh, in Paris they do, I think every hour, the uh, Eiffel Tower lights up and it's so gorgeous. Um, such a magical sight. So it really brought back that memory, which was pretty special. So last minute touches here of a little bit of charcoal pencil. This is me still messing with the face, even though I need to really let it be. I do that a lot in my work. Um, just kind of a habit. It's like I can hear myself saying, leave it alone. I loved sharing this with you guys and I hope that you will give it a try and um, yeah I just really enjoyed working this way and it was quite a little journey for me and I'm excited to work more with watercolor in this way and really build my confidence with it and I think you know if I could say anything is to to go for it and you know especially if you're a mixed media artist you'll find a solution if you mess up and I think that's one of the great ways um, you know, one of the great things about, you know, using different mediums. Uh, you get to learn their different qualities and the different effects that they give you. Um, and then you can kind of work your way out of a corner if you need to. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed this and thank you so much for watching. And I hope to bring you lots more videos this year. So happy new year and I hope everyone is safe and well. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next video.